I'm over here, the martial arts place. I used to go there when I was a kid. I was really good at it. I quit for skateboarding. I reached up the ranks in my belts, white belt, yellow belt, orange belt, purple belt, blue belt. And so I feel like that in Jesus Christ. Like the more we worship God, the more we just pray, the more we just oversee and look at the things and put our faith and hope and trust in God, the more we get another belt, we get another rank, we get another unpackaged like at Amazon, another shipment coming into our location in the region of our spirit. And I'm excited. I'm praying. I'm driving. I'm worshiping. I'm exalting. I'm magnifying my king. And I'm just grateful to be alive. And I just want to share, broadcast, televise, speak. Lord, I thank you that I have life. I thank you that I can drive. And I just feel the toxins and the evil in the world. I pray that you would anoint me. And as I drive through neighborhoods, as I drive through the section, evil would be eliminated. Demons would be arrested. Satan's power was shut down just by because I carry your spirit, Lord. Wherever I travel, you are. And I just want to bless you today. Whatever dark powers over this neighborhood, over this corner store, over that shell station, over that person, over this region, I destroy its power. I release your glory, your fire, Holy Spirit. I release the blood of Jesus over this land, over this city. I cover, I loose angels. I put the flag of the gospel of peace and Jesus Christ down. And I just release the glory of God, the fire of God to burn up evil roots, any attitudes in these people's career, whatever. Whatever depression's going on at the house, porn addiction, drug addiction, whatever witchcraft, whatever voodoo, whatever new age stuff they're getting into, I just pray that it will be diminished from this spot. And I claim, what's this place? General, Dollar General. I claim Dollar General for your kingdom, for your glory, Jesus. Your voice and your word speaks louder. And I declare Dollar General will be a godly company, whatever satanic hedge and power around the employees, any unappreciation in this store, any hatred in this store, any gossip in this store, I flood it out. I feel darkness. Or kind. Of, I feel kind of like a hedge around this place, Lord, not of you, Lord, but I feel kind of like, like, like something not right here. So I thank you for leading my spirit coming here, and I just take the sword of God, and I behead every power, every Goliath, every evil, every demon that's on this location, on this region. Jesus Christ, I cover it in the blood of Jesus. I release the angels of God to just synthesize, protect, and shield, and enlighten everybody's mind. I just loose the Holy Spirit, and I cover this vicinity in the Holy Ghost and fire. I release the anointing and the hand of Christ into that water, into this river, into these trees. Now I feel heaven flowing in. Now I feel the wind of God flowing in. We're going to go to the next location, but I just claim this for Jesus. I claim this entire street for Jesus. I claim this neighborhood for Jesus. I claim these clouds for Jesus in Jesus' name. <laughs> we about to drive in the name of Jesus. We about to drive in the name of Jesus. Don't tell nobody. 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 You ever just want to get up and drive? You feel like you're stuck sometimes? You feel like you just want to go? There ain't nothing wrong with that. But Jesus, who shed his blood and died for us, set us free so no matter where you at if you in prison the freedom of christ inside of you is reigning if you feel like oh no oh no oh no i'm trying to get crunk for jesus listen phone i need you to stay right there and don't disrespect me again by dropping all right oh this car driving mighty Lord, I give you praise today. I thank you. I honor you. I worship you. I adore you. I give you my heart, my soul, my spirit, my life. We about to drive to the park.
Welcome to the kingdom of heaven where Jesus reigns. Uh, I'm back on another night. What is this, like a revival night? What is this, like a deliverance night? What is this, like a breakthrough night? All of that in one tonight. All of that in one tonight. I got a milkshake with me. It's got mushroom coffee. Organic. And I'm ready to release a word of the Lord, the blessings of God, the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, and all the wisdom, the knowledge, the revelation that I've been collecting, not trying to, I need to speak new words to make this better, I need to do that to make this smoother, and I don't need to do none of that. Just glorify the name of the Lord, speak the things of God, Move in the strength that his strength is in the clouds. Just move in the strengths and just the chariots of his army and just the might of his wisdom. I come to bring that today. I come to share that today. And I just come personally to release all this in me. Because when I don't release these weights, they turn into tension. It turns into pressure. But when I stay releasing, I stay feeling freedom. I stay feeling free inside. All these things that have been stacked up inside of me, I'm releasing them. So I just ask God to give me favor tonight, wisdom tonight, a door of utterance tonight, a special presentation tonight, humility tonight. I declare there's going to be transformation tonight. We're going to rise in the things of the Lord. We're going to love his name, bless his name, praise his name. And I'm grateful to be here personally. I'm alive. I got plenty of wisdom at my table. I got revelation all over the place. I can drive. I got opportunity. Wherever my hand wants to go, it can reach the souls I desire. I can go and speak to them and have them. The beauty I desire to lay upon, it's all mine. In Christ, everything is yes, everything is amen, everything is mine. All the shine of God is mine in Christ. All the revelation and wisdom and waterfalls of power are mine in Christ. All the strength of heaven and the angelic beings are mine at my possession in Christ. I have no lack. There is no defeat. The devil bows down and everyone that worships and represents him bows down before me because I am the righteousness of God in Christ and I shall trample the dragon and the serpent under my feet God has put everything under my feet he has given me dominion and I take that back by force and by the power in Jesus name I thank God today because I feel a revival in my own spirit, a refreshment in my own spirit. I feel I feel a newness. I feel the impartation of the anointing and everything I've been studying and everything that I've been, you know, aspiring to do unto the Lord that he has honored it and he has accepted it and he has received it from a pure heart that the Holy Spirit has developed inside of me. And in that reception, there was a birth that's taking place and there is a culture of the kingdom of heaven that I'm beginning to realize and I'm understanding how to establish this and the things I've been fighting and learning and growing and in my mind and the technology of my mind and this goes here what about this what about this is coming together and it's teaching me it's displaying information from God to me and it's teaching me knowledge and it's giving me a way and a path and the kingdom to experience a greater virtue of my heavenly father and understand higher heights of beings of power and I'm receiving from heaven I'm receiving from the Lord I'm receiving insight through the Bible through the scripture and you know I'm lessening the the frustration of is this righteous the comparison of life it's diminishing and trying to activate everything on my own and pressure out myself it's diminishing and through that God the Holy One is replenishing me 
to greater to greaterness to a greater greatness in my vessel this vessel that belongs to him and he's molding his image inside of me and I walk with a strength I walk with a, a focus I walk with a concentration that is very vital vivid sharp like the two-edged sword in the scripture it's sharp and my ways slice my emotional state slices my mentality and process upon God it slices through demonic etheric cords through evil through witchcraft through satanic intentions through whatever you call it juju all these different mixtures and potions of evil that slices through because the power that is in the name of the Lord the strong power in the name of the Lord it eliminates darkness it's that trampling power that we've been given in Christ to trample darkness and evil under our feet. Shake up the rug and the carpet, get all the dust out, get all the leeches and the scorpions out by the fire of God. I come here today extended, cinematic, ready to let the Lord perform all things ready to shine for Jesus and I'm ready to reign that's what I've been destined for that's what I've been purposed for that's what I've been designed and created to do amen that's the introduction sometimes in life I feel inadequate. So what the hammer of God doing is he's breaking that because I'm supposed to feel that in my flesh. Which gives me a grace, which gives me a flow. Which gives me a dependence purely to thrive on God's spirit. No other engine, no other man's device because that gets fleshly and that gets satanic real quick like. So that's why a lot of times you have this certain emotion inside of you and you can't really understand it. You don't really know it, but it always makes you call on God. It always makes you pray until you feel a breakthrough. It always makes you so and fast until you get in that mode. That's the dependency that God places upon our life. Right? Crowns are being displayed, God is being glorified, and we get to labor unto the Lord, we get to work for the king, we get to eat at our, the king's table, we get to sit in the position where the king sits, and so we have a high calling. And we must understand our calling, the features of our calling. The benefits of our calling, the access of our calling. We must know the virtue of our calling. Not just a phone call and I'm going to be over at your house by 6 a.m. But we need to know the different aspects of the calling. What is a calling? What is the purpose of my calling? How does my calling benefit me and God and life and success? How can I add my calling and apply it to a life filled with success what does my calling revolve around what are the sequences and events that God is going to do in my life and how do I recognize it how do I perceive it and how do I know how to prepare myself for it So the great thing is, I don't have to figure out all these processes. The Holy Spirit is the process. And as long as I make God my focus, everything comes into agreement. And everything is in order. And I go through many stages of breakdown. What is that? I go through many stages of breakdown. Because every 
time the Lord breaks me down, something opens that has never been opened before. In the images, I get a focus of what I'm looking upon. And that strengthens the core of my mind. And God will give me strategy in the strands of those that have been strengthened. Sometimes that something is flabby, it's kinda, and it needs to be strengthened. And when it's strengthened, the Lord will put his hands on it and hold it and wear it like a necklace. In the degrees of my life, there's different flames. There's different intensities. There's different traveling abilities. And as I drive my car, my vehicle, and I travel, I make it my duty to pray for everybody. The pinnacle of my intention is to spread the gospel, the deliverance, the power, the light that I carry and possess and to transform as many to righteousness according to God's right standing. So that's at the front for, forefront of my mind. And as I just go in direct without knowing what I'm gonna say, I start hearing words, I start seeing keys, I start seeing symbols. Cause that pure raw dependency gives me a greater access. And in that raw dependency, when I'm not frustrated with it, when I recognize it and I'm at peace with it, and I submit to it, I've learned in life, we don't always, I don't always submit to God. There is a process God is doing in my life and I can't even truly begin to submit until I recognize and have Holy Spirit understanding of the process of God, the Father in my life. Now when that first part of that process takes place, then I'm able to submit to that knowing and that understanding. And then I get great influence inside of my spiritual being. Now I have to learn how to use what's inside of me, not just to make videos, this is a ministry but this ministry has to branch out into different avenues. If my river is going to connect with other rivers into the ocean, it has to branch out into other avenues. Praise God. So, if I go into the focus of my mind, there is a direction of flow there. And if I speak accordingly, in this moment, in, the, in this fast, I have to just see myself rising. Be a witness of the arrival of the risen one, the Christ. And so, there's so many parallels like Okay, I'm over here and I'm over here. I don't know if this is really what God wants, but I know this is what God wants because he keeps leading me here every time, but yet I have this feeling of separation as if I'm outside the will of God. But this is construction on the mind. Because if I fetch my knowledge from afar, I got to bring it back to the throne. And if I want a newness and a freshness, God's got to be able to flow through me in a way I'm not expecting, in a way I'm not used to. So when I let go of the emotional elements and just deny uncomfortability and not move because I feel uncomfortable, 
but speak according to the speech and will and place the Heavenly Father has assigned me to. Personalize God, because if I know his name, according to him, he will set me on high. The more I know his name, the attributes of his names, the manifestations of his names, the character in his name, he'll set me higher and higher according to my knowing of his name. He will set me on the rock. That is higher than I. That's where the am is. That's where the spoken voice of the representation of who he is sent to the one that has been sent in the message. So the message has to have a receiver. When these collide, connect. You just scored a touchdown. To know God's ways is precious. It's an emblem. It's an implementation, an invitation to just this place of wonder and awe and miracles. And it saturates you deep within. A place where the human mind does not detect, cannot decode, can't even begin to revelate with, identify with. So when we try to operate in that mode of our mind, we go into a cycle of confusion. Why do I keep thinking the same thing over and over? I'm going to do this, do that, and do that, but I'm not really getting anywhere. Because that has to be diminished and your conscious has to be trust. Not thinking human thoughts. Our thoughts conflict with each other. I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have done this. Maybe that that's confliction. But when the conscious of Christ, the mind which is in Christ, which is in you, and you're exercising trust, authority, dominion, silence, I am. Well, the signal that comes from that realm of God implementation God thoughts, that signal is going to reflect. It's going to be a pond that you carry. And the more you become acquainted with it, you become a minister of it. So you're a carrier of this divine power. And you extend it. You establish it. In the release is an extension. In the extension, there's a connection, which is an establishment. We take over land through this, and region through this, and vicinity through this, and God will give us territorial anointings. Reign in our dominion over legislation and branches and gov heavenly governmental systems in positions of power we will reach. It's a, it's a clue. When you look through the magnifying glass, there's a clue. You're seeing something through the image. And the image, image, nation, the collection of history and godly thinking, it approves you. like a passport so that you can travel to a greater speed in vicinity in the spirit and if I have to wait till I get old 
or more accomplished to speak because my human side wants to certify me when it's the Holy Ghost that has already certified me through the blood of the Lamb and the laying down of my life and the qualifications of discipleship according to the Word of God. Then I will be older and more accomplished, but I will be youthful in my experience, youthful in my speech. But if I come young at this, seek God early, even though I don't have all the human credentials, a church with 50,000 people, a ministry with 9,000, but I've been speaking, I've been teaching, I've been growing in the gifts, I've been learning, I've been adapting, I've been predicting, I've been seeking, I've been pursuing, I've been yielding, I've been submitting, and I've been carrying it out, then I am maturing rapidly. So despite credentials, age, what looks to seem like, I'm a dangerous brother carrying some dangerous revelation and some holy, heavenly, swiftly weight on me. Be careful how you judge me. The spear of revelation is, it deserts criticism. When people try to come against what you, they're coming against what's on your life. So when you got the Almighty, the Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, all on your life, that's who they're going against. Now it's ten times more dangerous in the area, the place, and time they go against you. Someone might give you a bad comment on your channel. Okay? But when you're on the operation and flow in the anointing, in the ministry, and someone tries to come against that, that shifts from them being your enemy and God dealing with them versus them becoming God's personal enemy and God crushing them. It's a difference. People have to be careful. And God will preserve you keep you hidden to protect other people. If that person is heavily filled with a spirit of criticism and you carry such an amount with the Heavenly Father, he'll keep you distant. Because if that person tries to spit upon what's on your life, they'll get crushed by it. Just like when he ran to try to get the, grab the altar from falling and he just died by the energy of God. Well, that's what happens in life. People get cursed, they get crushed, they get eliminated, they get destroyed when they go against the energy of God in the wrong way, in the wrong setting. And that ain't just for people that aren't in Christ. That is especially for the people in Christ. Because we should know better. What's your title say about you? You know, I've learned to progress through speed, the attitude of ascension, through gaining, through influence, through periods and cycles. But the Lord he'll, has shifted me into a reckoning, a recognizing of just a devotion, more devoted to seeing everything as the Word of God. Before I had modes in my mind that were in separation, but now that I am more filled with the Scripture, I look and behold through the eyes of His verse, and then I allow my spectrum to expand. And accumulating that, acquiring that from the Holy One, from the Almighty, it's like a gauntlet on me. It's like a brace on me. It's like a armor. It's like a dimension on me that I just carry on my arm. And I, my blocking power is much more broad. How I speak to demonic powers is much more simple, yet 20,000 times sharper. 
how I defend the brotherhood and the altar of God and my family and those that God has given me love and adoration for. And as I feed the sheep, the shepherding power, which is the staff, comes upon me. And this staff is literally an actual supernatural staff that you wield in Christ. And it locates the wolves headed towards the sheep. And it engulfs you with a divine rage, a divine anger. And you begin to speak the wrathful things of God towards these beasts and powers and medusas and wolves. And it crushes them from the headship of that bloodline because you possess such a vicinity in God that doesn't even make sense to the average Christian. You weren't called the average. You were called the Godship. Knowledge is going to be the thing that separates you in this life. Even in the kingdom of God. Those with wisdom, they'll shine brightly forever and ever. Now, when all the applications and diversity in my operation, in my production, devoted to God as an altar to get his attention, to please him, to use it to shine in this ministry. The Lord will move things around in place. And as I can see his hand in movement, in my ideals, I'm able to acquire and accomplish. This is how the Lord moves. This is how God sits. This is when he releases this kind of wind. This is when he, the timing he rides on the cherubim. This is his response and reaction to the seraphims that surround him. This is his armor that is his, that is given to me. This is his son, his beloved, his righteousness that is given to me. So I see on that level. Therefore I be on that level. Therefore, demons flee on that level. And as I learn to spread things out and remain in the remainder of stillness, and there's a certain posture, a composure where I get eye-identifying, reflective, revelation power. My spirit starts just coming out of my flesh. And I literally start soaring and I get bigger and bigger. And there is a growth of might inside of me. A growth of God inside of me. A growth of avalanches of his magnificent power in me. And I feel that. And as I've, as I've learned to stay there, through breaking the constraints and illusions of thought, and just stay there in a submission, in a discipline, in a yieldedness, in a chokehold-like surrender. And I've embraced and went through that emotion that tried to detect in my mind as something that wasn't godly to avoid. I broke through limitations. Now my spirit soars like the eagles in the wind, which is a baby of the cherubim in the wings of the wind. There's a connection there. And so there is a speed inside of our spirit where the interpretation of a dream now i don't just have dreams 
I have interpretation of the dream. I get the, I immediately get the dream and the interpretation without praying, without seeking. It is a gift that is unlocked inside of me. Now when I watch videos, I don't have to even reflect or spend hours. I immediately get the impartation of the knowledge that was granted to me. God has given this to us. He has blessed us. He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. And now, through the diminishing, I exercise creation mode. You create wisdom. You don't just gain it. You create wisdom. You create new realities. You create heavenly adobes. And this is what the world is looking for. In Christ. And so in this creation. Through a major process. God has given me a grace. And a tool of simplicity. Which is a catalyst. A catalyst to all the electricity. All the performance. All the promotion. And so with ease I just touch it. I touch a button. And boom, it starts to spread throughout the world, spread throughout the heavens, spread round about the throne of God. There's a spreading effect of power God can unlock inside of us, and it has unlocked to a degree. And I'm noticing it now very clearly in my spirit, and I come to testify. I come to testify. There is a seriousness of power upon me. And God has intense expectations and desires in this seriousness. So when I feel this seriousness, which is the presence of God enveloped around me to entune me to a violent focus, now I'm learning how to go deeper and deeper in the moment of God and speak greater mysteries, greater truths, greater revelations in this time. And in this segment, I'm able to locate many more seasons that's going to take place in my life. And the king and the ruler and the reignship of the crown with a throne is established in Yahweh's mountain. Okay, in Yahweh's fountain. And I'm able to drink and stand upon that. Okay. There are many branches that have been shredded. And it's just like a slim, like, length and just a beautiful, simple height to behold. I'm back. I'm back. So a lot of times, a lot of times in life, we try to avoid things. But we got to confront things. When we start using our confrontation power and not our avoidance power. See, avoidance power takes you back. And then you're not on the front line of the battlefield in the highest level of power where God moves at the strongest momentum, where the wind of the power and the passion of the axe and the battle and the army behind you and rulership. And you're not experiencing that kind of power because we avoid everything in life. So we're not slaying our Goliaths. We're avoiding our Goliaths. Therefore, we're not getting the promises. We're not getting that kingship. What if God, what if David would have never killed Goliath? What if they, what would have happened if, what if, what if, what if, what if, but he killed him. So we got to behead our Goliaths. 
stand on the battle line, get excited. You should be excited about fighting. You should be prepared and ready to dominate. You should be ready to reign and rule. It's our emotions that limit us from seeing us as the righteousness of God. So you got to talk to your emotions and you got to start to transact with your emotions. Look, this is, I feel like this, this feeling right here is going to give me the greatest level of glory. This lowliest position at my job in life is going to give me the highest wealth because I'm, I'm going to learn the system of McDonald's. I'm going to learn how to be a gen and I'm going to be a janitor on the highest level of heaven. I'm going to serve burgers for Jesus. So now you're devoting it to Jesus. Now, when you in that devotion, Jesus multiplies. Remember when they gave him the bread? We talk about this principle. When you give him your devotion, he multiplies spirituality in that devotion. Now you get revelation. Now you're getting wisdom. So if you can take the revelation and you can take the wisdom and you can write a book about it, you can produce a movie about it, you can put it on Pinterest, you can put it on YouTube, you can put it on the internet. Now you're taking the supernatural and you're putting it out. Now you're making money. Now you're building a business. Now you're growing wealth. Now you're getting e-commerce. Now you're releasing the kingdom of heaven and the economy of this earth. So what you got to do is I'm, I'm crunk. I got Jesus. I got the lamb. God by my side. Ain't no devil gonna touch me. Here we are to ride. Listen, so you drive, but if I take the roof off, if I take the mirror off, if I take the steering wheel off, if I take everything off, now I see, wait a minute, this, this chemical in my body or my car, because the car is a reflection of your body. The internet is a reflection of your mind. The sky is the reflection of the breath inside of you. The heavens is the reflection of the earth inside of you. Now, that's reflection and reflectory power. So in reflection, you can go back to a memory, but if you can decipher the memory, uncode it by removing the memory and not seeing it as one image or not trying to see that's a butterfly, no labels. So when you unlabel everything, when you unveil everything, you unveil things. So in the spirit realm, when you learn to unveil that house, you get this, you start to see all these numbers and all this information and all these codes and all these downloads and all this access and all this matrix and all this power and all this understanding. And in these codes, because the Aramaic version of the Bible, I was studying the original order of the Bible. They talk about Greek, the Aramaic Bible. It was just in numbers that they read from the right to the left. So when I understand the code right to the left of the Aramaic Bible, and I've been studying it, even though I don't really... I'm not going to say I don't understand it because the Bible says he that seeks the Lord understands all things. I don't want to speak against God's word. But when I look at the code, the language of the original, and I go from the right of the left, because they say in Hebrew, they read from the right of the left. So if I'm studying, I'm examining the original power of God's word, the potency and purity of the scripture that hasn't been translated by man's mind. So when I study that, that code, brother, I can... I can I can decipher into the kingdom of heaven beyond your imagination just by studying that code of scripture. Okay? Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. So at my job I had two angels in human form that came to me. One just walked in the door with a water bottle. He just walked in the door when our store shut down. He just walked in the door the back door. He just walked in it. And he's like, you got water? I was like, oh, let's go outside. And I gave him, I gave him a cup of water. I said, where are you headed? I knew, I already knew he was an angel. I said, where are you headed? He's like, oh, I got to get here, here. So I gave him $20. Boom. Then there was another guy that came through and he ordered and he couldn't, he wasn't, he didn't even really know how to talk in human language. Like I was like, obviously you're an angel. He's like, he didn't even know how to talk. He's like, uh, and, and, and he was so gentle, so calm, obviously an angel. And he came back around, something was missing, but I gave it to him for free. I didn't charge him and I like that. Went outside and he started, he grabbed my hand, like just like this, and he held my hand and he just looked at me. And I said, he said, what's your name? And I was like, I know you're an angel. I was like, my name's Matthew. And I was like, what's your name? And then he, he lied to me. I didn't know angel. Well, he, maybe he didn't lie. Maybe, maybe he didn't lie. He was just trying to cover up. Sometimes, see, angels are smart. So he was like, I'm David. I was like, no, what's your angel name? Is it Uriel? Is it Uriel? He's like, yeah. And so he released an impartation to me and I felt it, an angelic impartation from the most high God. He released it to me in my arm and I felt it. And I'm not the same person anymore. I don't dwell in a way where the dwelling can stray anymore. I don't perceive in a perception that is an illusion that can make my mind consider deception anymore. So God has done something to a trigonometry in my brain stimulation that has caused me to perceive, overlay, draw in the power like never before. 
So, and this comes from the characteristic of concentration. God didn't, God couldn't give this to me a month ago. There was a certain level of spiritual concentration that had to develop inside of me for God to unlock this ability and power in me. Otherwise, my mind would not be able to handle it. You notice how God does so much to you and sometimes you can't handle it because you have not unified the power of the spirit into connection. So there's a lack of connection, which is a lag in the spiritual internet connection. And because it's not connected, you're trying to connect it in your mentality, but you have to connect it in your spirituality. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Let's keep going. Okay. And then when I look in the reflection, I see four doors that open to me. And and the interpretation power, right? So I learned to come here and I learned to focus. Because under this constellation of the Almighty, there was an unfolding and unveiling. If I can focus on that, I can get two tablets. God wrote on tablets. So in my mind, I write on tablets. God showed up to Moses in a burning bush. So in my mind, I show up in a burning bush to people. So now I'm learning to move according to the movement, according to the scripture. So three movements in that. A mental, emotional, scriptural movement of connection, connectivity. So now I'm getting divine connectivity, right? And there are many sequences, many nodes, many extensions, many lines which connect, 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 open, unlock, 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 forge. Here's the building. Here's the definition. Now I understand the definition of God's word. Not just reading my Bible, but defining my Bible. Seeing the refiner in my Bible. Learning the mechanisms of the Bible. Learning the DNA of the Bible. Learning the sequences and the events of the Bible. Learning the time tables of the Bible. Learning the, because everything you see in life comes from the Word of God. The timetable comes from the Word of God. The stars, the constellation comes from the Word of God. The nursery, everything in life, it comes from the word of God, even Satan. Okay, so when I use that word, not just read my Bible, but I use the Bible as a key to unlock the universe. When I use the Bible as a magnifying glass to see the kingdom of heaven within me that Christ spoke about. When I use the Bible as a sword, as a hammer, as a car, as money, as success. Now I'm tapping into some powerful, powerful, powerful riches and power that's within me waiting to be unlocked. But according to how you see God's word is going to be according to how your change transformed. I'm radical, so I want radical transformation. I want radical downloads. I want intense, intense, immense, strategic power to come upon my life. I want there to be every kind of labyrinth of holiness to come upon my life. I want there to be every way, which way of God in my life. I want every part of Jesus activated in me. I want every gram of the Holy Spirit to be in full digestion. Now I'm putting music here on this channel. I need you to check it out because I'm going to be deciphering many codes of God and there's going to be much secret, sacred symbolism of God. There's going to be secrets of God hidden, embedded in plain sight and open. And I want you to catch this stuff. I want you to eat this stuff. Let me tell you a secret. When you can become the most powerful person on the earth in the most simplest way where you can, some people, some preachers get so powerful, they don't go to the, and, and this is something that I have to work on tremendously. They, they won't go to Walmart no more. They're too cool to be, they're, they're, they're too good to go back. And, and so when you can become the most powerful person, but the most open and available person at the same time, 
Not the most comfortable cat where you're just in a vicinity in a mansion, hide, and then you come and preach the gospel and you got money, success. You love God. You love Jesus. You and your wife and your kids love. But when you can become the most powerful man and yet the most simple, open, available janitor of life, brother, you will walk in a level and a dimension and a realm of God's glory beyond your wildest dreams, beyond beyond what a preacher could become, beyond what beyond what the office can become. You who you are is greater than the office that has been given to you. You're greater than an apostle. You're greater than a prophet. That's just an office, a title, a job that God has assigned you to. That's nothing but janitor work. You in Christ are greater than any office that God will ever give unto you. And don't make me get gangster now. Okay, so if you can be the highest level of power, but still be the most vulnerable person, the most open person, go to Walmart, um, be the most... Be, see, your fame, in God's eyes, your fame is not for you to hide. Your fame is to impose... Oh, Jesus, this is good. This is good because I know this is straight from the throne of God. I can feel it. Your fame is for you to give that fame to other people. Show people the fame of God inside of you and give it to other people and elevate people because God will use it as a talk. God doesn't just work separately. He works inside of us. So if he wants to exalt somebody, he's like, I'm going to use you to exalt that person. I'm going to use you to impart fame to that person. I'm going to use you to bring that person a magnificent job making tons of money. I'm going to use you. And we don't see like that. We're like, oh, God's up there. No, no, no. We don't see like that. So when I learn to take all the blessings on my life now and just start sharing them with everybody, go out in the crowd and just like Jesus, go out through the crowd, start, he, he went in the crowds, ready to touch people, ready to give all he had. If I do like Jesus, brother, I'm going to get some stupid, stupid results. I'm talking about some stupid results in my spirit, in my life, in my sanctuary, in my God, in my Christ, in my King, in my Savior. Okay? Oh, Jesus. So that's what... Abraham, I got to study. God, I just, the Lord told me, I want you to study Abraham and I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I want you to study Abraham. I want you to study Abraham. It was something special about Abraham that I want you to, and I want to impart to you. It's inside of you, but I got to activate. I want to impart it to you. Now I was watching all these spiritual, cause I, I was watching all these videos about the Bible, about the Ara uh, Aramaic version of the Bible, how the codes of the Bible and how the timeline. And it was things that you just don't really get in church. I study and, and you can get it. I, I'll, I'm going to start putting links in here. I study things that you just don't find in church. You just you just really don't find in your normal church. OK, deep, 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 deep things about the word of God, about scripture. And you, but you got to be spiritual for this. You can't be religious. So we're going to go there. Right. And I just it's amazing because he was talking about how information comes into us. Knowledge, wisdom, information comes into us. But every time it deciphers in a new way, just like the same electrical current that powers your Wi-Fi, when it comes upon the screen, it comes in a different shape, a different form. So even though it's the connection of the Wi-Fi, when that Wi-Fi comes on your computer, it's in a different form on the screen. When it goes into our technology, it's in a different way of power, a different weight, a different measure. So he was talking about how every time we gain information and we it enters us, it uncodes, it's, it deciphers, it uncodes our spiritual being, our revelation, our destiny, our purpose, the God inside of us. And so even though our mind will try to limit us by, oh, I've already read that book over and over. But the more you gain the same information, whether you think it's new, it's old, not your, not according to your thinking habits, it deciphers inside of you. And then you start getting the, 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 the technology inside or the internet or the connection of God inside. And it unfolds into a different manifestation and it unfolds here. And you start just like the world, you start powering up television systems. You start powering TV lines. You start power and you start taking over the airwaves. And the spirit, just by having this revelation and speaking it out loud. And then they were talking about the vehicles of God, the cherubims of God, the chariots of God. And it was incredible. And I laid in my palace. Stop calling yourself broke. You live in a palace. You're a king. You're a priest. You have so much money coming to you. You know, I tell God, I pray over videos and then they get thousands, thousands of people come to them. just going to talk now. 
not stop the video, but just talk. Wisdom is a pearl, and that pearl shines in the light of the firmament of, firmament of heaven. And you'll recognize the firmament of heaven as an opening in the mind, in the sky of your mind. And you'll begin to see and witness angels coming forth, diamonds coming forth, blessings coming forth, treasures coming forth, riches coming forth, new experiences coming forth, revitality, revitalization coming forth, empathy coming forth, compassion. And I'm grateful that Jesus has got me this far. I love Jesus. He knows the end from the beginning. And you know the beginning according to where you are now. And so there's a scroll for us that's going to unlock and unfold. And there's going to be many rewards that come to us. And the Lord is going to replenish and restore and redeem everything inside of us that our life consists and revolves around. And I'm grateful because the Lord is going to teach us how to drive. He's going to teach us how to cook. He's going to teach us how to swim and fish and hunt and build houses. He's going to teach us how to read books. He's going to teach us how to manufacture. He's going to teach us how to prosper, how to make money, how to be successful, how to love our wives and kids and family. He's going to make us stronger, better, faster, more rapid. And he's going to remain faithful to us no matter what. He's going to bring the right pieces into our life the right emotions and we're going to feel good, alive, excited, happy, joyful, pristine, beautiful, magnificent because of God, because of God, Jesus. And his light is going to shine on us. Heaven's going to dine on us. Right on time for us. All the time for us. And we're going to watch movies in the Lord. And we're going to swim in the Lord. And we're going to have fun in the Lord. And we're going to dance in His rain. And shine in His manna. And partake of His fruits. And drink of His wine. And bubble in His joy. And laugh in His midst. And have church in heaven. And we're going to grow so rapidly and we're going to be able to travel wherever we want, go wherever we want. There's going to be no fear, no worry, no frustration, no chemical imbalances, no weight of the flesh. And we're just going to be free and expression and just driving everywhere and just finding new locations and hidden knowledge. And we're going to be eating and loving one another and it's going to be peaceful. We're going to have peace. And we're going to be, not have to worry about the devil anymore. Not have to worry about evil anymore. And we're going to be happy with each other. We're not going to have preferences, who we want to pick, who we want to marry. Everybody's going to belong to us, and we're going to belong to everybody freely. There's going to be so much love and completion and fulfillment, we're not going to have enough room to hold it all. But we're going to hold it, the treasure chest of our life. And we're going to be free, flying kites, going on the beach, and... Looking at the grass, all the animals lying together. We can pet all the animals. None of them are bad. Nothing's bad here. Everything's perfect here. And we're going to feel so safe, so secure. We're going to feel like little kids. 
You just want to play on the playground. Be a nurse. Help people. Our dreams will never fade. Everything we dreamed, asked for, God's given it to us. And our Father loves us.